Hello, if you like me, please subscribe and like the video. Gonna do zero damage in here. When these bosses get up here, oh shit. He was channeling his ball. Here is a quick map to show off what the mapping looks like on this build. It's nothing spectacular, but it's definitely not the worst either. It's definitely not a mapping build, don't get me wrong, but it's fine. Basically just run around, use an earth and drop your cremation and it clears decently. To give this build a rating in each category, I'd say for boss damage is about 6 out of 10. However, the uptime on single target if it's a moving boss is really bad because it's a cremation build, so that means all your damage uh, stands still. This is all your damage right here when you're casting on it. And to make it worse, you also have to cast here on Earth. So if the boss is moving a lot, uh, your uptime is quite bad, but if they stand still, it's pretty decent. So 6 out of 10 for boss damage, 1 out of 10 for damage uptime. The clear speed, I'd say, is about 5 out of 10. It's nothing special. Uh, it is a little scuffed with the two-button play style. Usually I don't mind it, but on this build, it's a little rough, but it's fine. But this is definitely not a mapping build. It's not the purpose of the build. Now, for what the build is, a pur is purpose for is defense, 10 out of 10, and simulacrum farming, also 10 out of 10. It's pretty much... Uh, like as good as it gets in those categories. Um, if you want to see the boss fight that I've done on this build, you can see my uber serious fight. Uh, I'll link it in the description. Uh, it's also on my channel. I uploaded it the other day. So, like I said, this build is primarily meant for some lacrims, but it can do all other content as well. What you want to do is you want to cast your unearth this is how you play the build you cast your unearth pop three cremations if you can it's a little scuffed because the cremations will blow up your corpses therefore making it harder to cast cremations so you might have to like cast unearth uh and then cast unearth again and try and get your third uh and then when the cremations are going you hold down your unearth it's kind of like a channeling skill and it will cause a bunch of explosions. Um, so the way the build works 
is phantasmal cremation gives you a chance to explode a nearby corpse when firing projectiles. Um, then you use ashes to scale to a really high amount, so mine's at 90%. Um, I'm not sure if it actually makes a difference if it's at 100, if it's actually a noticeable difference, or if there's so many projectiles, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so that's how you, that's the main mechanic of the build. And then you use unearth for the corpses. And the reason you use unearth over desecrate is because you can keep scaling the corpses uh, levels, which gives them more HP and makes the explosions do more damage through unearth rather than desecrate. And desecrate will just be equal to the map level as when unearth as you can see, it keeps on scaling. It's level 89 on my gem. <clears throat> and then it is an additional plus five from the enchant. Uh, it also casts very quickly and you get a lot of corpses out quickly. So the main ways you scale damage with this build is plus five to corpse level enchant. It's very large. I would not do the build without this enchant. Um, and then also getting additional unearthed gem levels. So the main way you get those is you can get a pair of plus four gloves, which I currently do not have because I'm using Verdi's Veil. Um, and I'm using higher energy shield pair of gloves because I'm in hardcore, but for softcore, maybe even in hardcore, it would be worth um, crafting these gloves, which I will showcase in a minute. Uh, once I get to the crafting portion, you can skip ahead if you want to see that. Um, and then you get another plus uh, four or five from your empower. And then from your weapon, you can get plus two. I only have plus one because I just was lazy to craft a plus two weapon. Um, so I just multi mod it a plus one. And then you get another plus one from Ashes. Now, you also get Phantasmal Unearth uh, instead of regular Unearth. And what this does is it makes the quality corpses spawn to have increased maximum life. So you link it with an Enhance, and you also use Ashes, and it gives it a bunch of quality, which increases the life of the corpses, which gives you more damage. So calculating the DPS of the build, uh, in my opinion, is not worth doing, but it would be something, if you really want to do it, it would be something like the base monster life, which you can find on PUEDB, times 1.4, which is the bone archer, which is what um, on Earth spawns. Uh, so you multiply base life times 1.4, which is the bone archer modifier, times your corpse life bonus from your tree slash necro, whatever. Um, times the amount of corpses you actually cast per second based on your specific cast speed. And as you can see, this gets out of hand very quickly with calculating the damage. And I, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. You can do it if you really want to. Maybe there's some other videos out there where some lunatic does the math and you can just plug in numbers, but uh, not worth it. So main ways you scale defense. Now, this is the main part of the build. There's lots of defense here. Uh, Aegis Aurora gives insane recovery, it recovers energy shield equals to 2% of your block, and it gives you plus 5% maximum cold res, which is useful because this build is a melding build. Uh, as you can see here, my res is a little bit low because I had max res on my uh, relic, and uh, this character, I died to Uber Exarch because I'm bad at the game, and I walked into a bunch of stuff. I walked into like everything, so um, I don't have that anymore. Uh, you can get it to 90 max res. It's a little difficult though, but it is possible. I'm also missing plus one on my gloves because uh, I spent like 20 divines worth trying to get that to plus two because you have to use Orb of Conflicts and it did not agree with me. So, yep. Um, so you're nearly max block on this build. I'm at 65, 69. You can go to max block if you want. I don't think it's really worth going to completely max block. This is more than good enough. 
Um, and then you get 25% elemental reduction from your chest because it makes it take hits as chaos damage and this character is CI, so we're immune to chaos damage. So that's another layer that makes this build really good for um, doing like Exarch maps. Because you nullify like half of the Exarch altars you get, but not really a mapping build, but if you do want a map, that is a bonus. Uh, that's also very good for Sanctum because there's a lot of chaos damage in Sanctum. It likes to roll that mod on waves. So that's also a very good plus for Simulacrum. Did I say Sanctum? I meant Sim Simulacrum. Um, Build is okay at some lacum too, but um, and then Verity's Veil we get damage hitting you is unlucky, and you're also hexproof and you take no extra damage from crits because you'll wear two magic rings ideally. I'm not currently, but you should. Um, the build also gets Zealot's Oath and Divine Shield on the passive tree, which gives lots of regen. And I'll show you that here. Um, you'd even have more than that in maps, because when you get hit, um, Divine Shield will, whatever damage you prevent, gets tacked onto your regen, and it sacks up really quickly, and you can get like up to 5k. Is the highest I've seen it. Um, then you also be stun immune because of your Sanctified Relic. You'll get a Invocation of Unwavering Stance, and you'll put that on your Relic, and then your Stun Immune. Uh, you get Endurance Charges from Enduring Composure Cluster Jewel. You are Ailment Immune from Purity of Elements, and this lets you use Leaf Shade if you want. Um, not really necessary, I have it on for doing uh, Uber Bosses. Um, you can take it off and put the points elsewhere for either more damage or more Energy Shield. Or another cluster, whatever you want to do. Um, and then with Purity of the Elements uh, Aura, you can get a Watcher's Eye, you take physical damage as elemental damage instead. And since you're melding, that gets reduced a lot. And since you're wearing this chest piece, it all gets reduced even more. So it ends up being pretty close to a uh, flat fizz reduction. Um, you get more fizz taken as elemental from your taste of hate. Um, you get lots of armor. I'm at 48k with flasks up. And then, since this build uses all the elemental flasks, these have really high uptime. They, they will always be up in Simulacrum. It's really easy to keep them up in pretty much all scenarios. And then, you also get... Molten Shell and Fall Molten Shell, and since you're a Necro, um, you get 40% increased skill effect duration, which is nice on it, so you get really long Molten Shell durations as well. Um, so, getting into the minor things, um, I recommend leveling the build as Armor Brand Commission, staying life-based until you're around level 85 or so. Um, Due to the cost of the build, I'm going to assume you can figure out how to level 285 uh, without struggling. So I'm not going to include any like leveling trees or anything because this is a very expensive build. Well, maybe non-softcore, actually. But in hardcore, it's very expensive. <laughs> and I imagine it's not that cheap in softcore either. So the Ascendancy order, you want to go. Uh, I'll just say it because, but you should be able to figure it out if you can afford this build. Plaguebringer, Corpse Pack, Mistress of Sacrifice, and then Essence Glutton. Uh, kill all bandits. Pantheons, you're going to do Lunaris and Tukahama while you're doing Simulacrums. While you're mapping, I'd use Lunaris and Ralakash. While you're bossing, I would use Solaris and Tukahama. So the best way to craft a high-end weapon is to first buy a base with increased fire damage, tier 1 fractured. And then you want to use the fossil shuddering, corroded, jagged, and metallic in a 4 socket resonator. This gives you about a 1 in 6 chance to hit um, plus 1 to all spell skill gems. It's about a 1 in 6 chance, hit it in 2 there. So with all the mods full here, 
we want to do is we need to annul a suffix and this prefix. So whatever we hit, we just cannot hit this. Okay, there we have a suffix is open now. What we can do to remove this one and make sure we do not hit this one is we craft cannot roll caster modifiers and this works with the nulls. So now we can safely annul that. Um, if you hit this, you would have to recast, recraft it. Uh, so hopefully that just doesn't happen. Now what we want to craft is prefixes. Uh, we want to craft, sorry, cannot roll attack modifiers. Uh, one thing to note here is if say this suffix was gone, there's only one here. What you'd want to do before you craft this cannot roll attack modifiers. So you want to craft a prefix and then slam another suffix on to give the maximum chance that um, with this harvest augment, we do not remove um, the wrong thing because it has a chance to hit this and we want the maximum chance to not hit it. So now we get a harvest crafting uh, augment, physical add slash remove, and we just hope it doesn't hit this. And in this case, it didn't. If it did hit it, you'd have to start over. And then we have this. Now what you could do next, if you really want to um, min-max this weapon, uh, what you do to min-max it is you'd craft prefixes cannot be changed, and you would wipe it with a scour. And then you'd craft prefixes cannot be changed again. And then you'd syndicate Ashling, slam it, unveil it. And what we're looking for here is chance to deal double damage while focused or regular double damage works as well. That's the ideal thing you're going to want here. Um, if you don't hit that, you'd have to start over and keep Ashland slamming it by uh, wiping the suffixes, by doing prefixes can be changed and uh, scour it. Or you could just stick with whatever you get and then you could craft on trigger. Uh, so ideally you'd get something like this. Um, not like that, like now I'm not, never going to get it, but <laughs> you get oh, I missed it I blew it just give me double damage so you get double damage and what you do now is you would just craft on uh, trigger. Actually, no. You would block something. I'm not really 100% sure what you block. Um, it's easy to figure out. If you're doing this, I'm sure you can figure out what to block. Um, I'm just gonna say probably like mana regen or something. I don't know. What the, I don't know the weightings. Uh, you can check on PUEDB or on the calculator page here, but, oh shoot, I better save my weapon. Oh no, wait, it's over. Well, you block it and then you slam it, then you craft trigger, <laughs> basically. If you're looking for a more budget weapon to use, you can just get a fractured plus one all physical spell gems. And then what you could do is use same fossil combo shuttering corroded jagged metallic. You'd roll it till you get um, plus one. And now you would annul uh, one of the suffixes and then craft on. Uh, Prefixes cannot be changed. Now you'd scour it. And you can just multi mod it to have um, 
trigger. And double damage while focused. Or whatever else you want. If you don't want to press the focus button, you could do like cast speed as well. Cast speed is good. Or you could just do flat double damage. It's really up to you. You can check in POB, which is optimal if you care, but they'll be pretty close. Here's how you craft the best pair of gloves. It's pretty cheap to do, unless you get really unlucky. So you get corroded, dense, faceted, and pristine fossil, and you put it into a four socket resonator. And then uh, you do that, and you want to hit these three mods right here. They're just pretty high chance, as you can see. Sometimes you don't hit it, but you pretty much will always hit it. So you keep doing that until you hit it. And then after you hit these three, you craft on... Um, suffixes cannot be changed. And then when you get that, you will take it to Ashling um, in a mastermind fight, Ashling Vale. Um, you will do that. It will take off. The suffixes cannot be changed. And you unveil it. And you hope you hit um, plus two to projectile gems. I didn't hit it there. Uh, so you're going to have to annul that off. If you then hit one of these with the annul, which I didn't write there, you'd have to start over again. So now craft suffixes cannot be changed again. You'd fail it. Unveil it. Plus two to socket AOE gems also works since unearth has an aoe tag you can do projectile or aoe and then that's your finished gloves for uh, the crafting portion and next what you do is you will craft on um plus one to socketed projectile gems and then there you go your gloves are done